Brian Little. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Microphone check. Microphone check. Check two one two. What you what what y'all gonna do when we are live for another Wizarding Wednesday for you bars? I think. <laughs> oh, we got mics. We got checks. We got mic checks in the chats. From Jen Kingdom, Trisha Perez, Ren, Brooke, <laughs> Metatron, what is good? It's been a dog's age. Oh my gosh. Yo, it's been a minute. Magica, Becky, Sigan, Jenny, Jenny, uh, <laughs> Noah, what's good, Merlin? Gabe, Ethan, good to see you again. Bars, I love. <laughs> I was like talking and like uh, clicking on stuff, and I don't remember what I said. So I was like, "Is it bars? Is it? I don't know. Does, does that make sense? Does it? Does it rack up?" <clears throat> sure. Thank you to all the. Uh, DC Monson, uh, James. <laughs> hey, Discord, let's go. MPS Phantom celebrating uh, getting the account back in 15 months on Patron Squad. Well, that is good. Thanks for the support. 15 months, man. Gosh, time has flown by. I still, still feels like the game's release. Heck, it still feels like Wizards Unite Day sometimes. So, time is a construct <laughs> uh hey josh <laughs> with the metrics oh yeah congratulations josh daddy with the mic check josh and parish i made a post if you didn't see you better ask somebody oh i forgot to post it in discord ah i'll post it in discord time is made up <laughs> 
so much yeah finally have day off from work on a wednesday ellen Patronus squad, let's go. <laughs> Yo, this your boy James over expect to go. Bring you guys the latest and greatest. And Hogwarts Legacy content. And today is another Wizarding Wednesday live stream. We come together every Wednesday. Live. Where we get to talk to you about all things Wizarding World, whether it be gaming, whether it be news, mostly rabbit hole theories, but it's a fun time. And it's a good time. <laughs> Nagara, welcome to Patronus Squad. Expect to go Patronus, one of the higher tiers. Let's go, thank you, Nagara. One of the higher tiers. Thank you. We get some Ravenclaws in the chat. Let's go. Thank you for the support. That is huge. I need a like. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I need an air horn. Wait. Let me get an air horn for the uh, new member of Patronus Squad. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find. I'm going to YouTube. I'm getting a. No. Let me get the victory song. Victory song from Final Fantasy. Victory Final Fantasy. Hold on. Should be short and sweet. Oh crap, ads. <laughs> hold on, still short and sweet, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so we're gonna pretend, we're gonna pretend that uh, Nagra just uh, joined Patronus Squad, expect to go Patronus highest tier. What does that sound like? Hey. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Naylene, hi y'all now. Stickers, no, hi y'all. Oh yeah, 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 we got some new uh, stickers. I'm slowly integrating them um, for this month, my birthday month. Uh, so yeah, we're slowly, slowly integrating uh, the mini, mini Jameses and mini Sue emotes that we've made in the past for designs and bringing them into the thing. Hi, Wizarding fam. What is up, Parrish? Did you see the news? Did you see it? I just want to make sure. I forgot to post it in Discord. I'll post it afterwards. <sighs> but yo, again, happy Wizarding Wednesday. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. First, we're going to go over some Wizarding World news, just some small topics that have come across my timeline that I think is funny, but it would be uh, cool, to, it's cool to share with. How did that happen? Is blurbs up? How did that happen? Did y'all hear that? Our blurbs up? Our sound alerts up? Wait. Twitch alerts work here? No. I don't have that alert. Wait. Do blurbs or sound alerts work over here? Oh my gosh. Well, another reason to follow us on Twitch. <laughs> we got a ton of sound of stuff over there. Oh my gosh. Ooh, shiny. Where'd the time go? <laughs> 19 months from Patronus Squad member of Merlin. 19. Oh, good lord. That's. Yo, this the, how, wait, 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 how are y'all doing that? How are y'all doing that? I need to know how y'all doing it so people can use it. Oh my gosh. Oh, spiders, why they have to be spiders? Oh my gosh. Rita was good. <laughs> yup, 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 there it is. There it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So something's happening over on Twitch that's allowing cats to do the sound alerts over there and have it come through here. Do I have the Twitch sound alerts? It should be muted though. Oh my gosh. I don't push up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Go to about page on Twitch and click on sound alerts. No way, no way. Hey, wizard PhD in the house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this changes 
everything over Wizards League Wednesdays. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. How do you know if, I, if some of these songs can, uh, uh, might get demonetized for these? This is crazy. Oh my gosh. This is <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, this is a game changer. This is a game changer. I gotta figure out, so, I guess just go over to our Twitch page, make sure you're following or whatever, and you have access to our sound alerts. That I thought I had them on mute over here though. So it's so weird it's playing through. That is hilarious. I don't know how it's playing through. Chaos stream, yeah, facts. So yo, uh, as, I said <laughs> as I said earlier, we got uh, a lot to talk about. Um, this is going to be a part one of four this is my birthday month and i thought i'd do something that i care about when it comes to the game and that is the story so we're gonna write hogwarts legacy 2 we're gonna write it we're gonna work on it this is something sue like uh pitched to me she's like james we should just write it like you're always talking about it if you just write it do it the community so we do it on wednesday wednesday and uh we're gonna write Hogwarts Legacy 2. Uh, <laughs> but first, we're going to talk about the Unforgivables and having a special guest on voice call, uh, voice chat, which is going to be none other than uh, the witch herself, uh, the sus queen, uh, the constants in constant, wait, the constant in constants. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Wizard PhD, aka Prof Lynette. So she's going. We're gonna have her come in in about 30, 40 minutes or so, around five o'clock p.m. Eastern. So it should give us time to go over the news and stuff, and uh, talk about uh, some of the uh, topics that we're going to go going in. And the reason we're recruiting her for today's write up is we're going to be setting up the villain. We touched on it during a past wizarding Wednesday. I want to say two wizarding Wednesdays ago. And I found a connection between the unforgivable a few moments later. <laughs> and possibly, uh, being the unforgivable from wizards unite, possibly being the villain in Hogwarts legacy. Too. And I explained why. And I touched on it, but I did a write up for Lynette just so she could have my notes. I sent her some links uh, to information that I got some of the information from. I actually have all of the story parts from all the brilliant events. Shout out to Mark over at Zillman's Wizarding World. Uh, and so we're going to be going back in time talking about Wizards Unite and how it connects and why the next villain should be either mentioned with the unforgivable or at least teased with the unforgivable so yeah we're gonna be talking about that <laughs> so yeah all my wizards unite crew and uh fans and players and fans uh get excited also again we'll have uh professor lynette with us for a little bit while talking about it so yeah appreciate her taking time out of her busy day over at IGN to uh, come through and uh, reminisce and talk story beats a lot of sus and a lot of uh, chaos so yeah <laughs> you know how we do uh, to you Harry Potter was that like, facts again facts so yeah and then from that we're going to be writing it so I want you guys to be thinking about oh oh <laughs> always <laughs> always Oh my, oh my gosh. Um, so I want you guys to be thinking about a huge intro. If you played Hogwarts Legacy, you know what I mean. An intro that's just going to like, oh, we're here. We're in the Wizarding World. Stuff is going down. It's about to happen. We need a intro. And I, what, I want you guys to be thinking about an intro that would be impactful in general. We'll get into specifics once we've gone over the villains and the possible story arc and at least how it ties not only to Wizards Unite, but to what Hogwarts Legacy 1 has already set up with the Ministry of Magic's involvement uh, in general. So um, be thinking about that because I'm, I'm literally going to be writing this down. 
Uh, I'm going to have notepad up and we're going to be typing and kind of like pitching about it. So I want to have some fun. And this is something I'm passionate about. And it's my birthday month. So I was like, I don't care. Like, let's do it. So <laughs> I'm going to be talking about story beats because that's what I care about. So that being said, I want to say hi to everybody here live in chat. And if you're watching this on replay, uh, be sure to hit replay squad in the uh, comment section and uh, join in on the conversations as they're going while you're watching. You're like, hey, I enjoyed that topic of conversation. I'm gonna put in my two cents, ta -ta 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 type it. And make sure you guys are spamming the like button. If we get hundred likes, uh, we get to see me do uh, pirouettes with Sue or draw. Sue have Sue draw something. She would hate that. Um, but also, we always end with the chocolate frog uh, card opening, and we got a first one we've never had in the four years we've been doing this. We've been opening chocolate frogs for four years, and we got our first ever card, Ignatio Wildsmith. That is the first one. I don't know if it's a new card or not, but that is the first time we've ever got an Ignatio Wildsmith and we un unboxed it live last week. So hopefully we get a new card this week or Merlin, we'll see what happens. So a lot in store for you guys, gonna be a lot of fun. I do have Wizarding Trunk box I wanna open, but I feel like the story might take up a lot of time. So we'll see, we'll see how the time goes on that one. So that being said, uh, thank you guys for being here. And I wanna say hi to everybody here currently right quick. We got, Aaron, Becky, uh, Britta Critter, Ethan, Gabe, Jenny, Joshua, Magica, Merlin, uh, Metatron, MPS Phantom, Nagla, Perlish, Perez, all 14 members of Patrona Squad. Right there. Then we got Professor Swiss. Professor Spells. Ooh, I like that one. I feel like I know who that is. Uh, then we got Rita, Sigan, Trisha, Loren, all four members of Patrona Squad right there. I'll make sure I got Perez in there. And if I miss anybody, if I didn't call anybody, holler at me in the uh, chat box for me. Uh, so I can say hi to you guys. We got Gabe in, in there as well. Starts with AK being cast at Morgan Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is, uh, that is a bang. That is starting off with a bang. Uh, Danielle's also here. I followed your playthrough. So, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be actually uh, starting a new Hogwarts Legacy playthrough when the update comes in this summer. So... <laughs> <laughs> there it is uh so be on the lookout for that um i'm excited we're finishing up our uh, final fantasy playthrough and uh it's getting good it's getting good god this game is so good so that being said uh without further ado let me get some yo's in the chat if you guys want wait let me retweet this right quick let me retweet let people know we're live onto interwebs because that's what i'm supposed to do as a content creator <laughs> uh, let me see OBS. Ba, 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 ba. That and going to gifts. And Yo! let's go. <laughs> let's go here with the yo's in the chat. <laughs> uh oh yeah, let's go with this one. We're live. I always just put that. We're alive. <laughs> Yo, oh my gosh. I can't believe y'all found a way to get that. That's crazy. All right, we post that. All right, then I gotta share on the interwebs. <sighs> Keep playing, I'm on my 11th run on the main quest. Oh my gosh, Ramos. You're welcome. I should have known it was Josh. <laughs> oh, I have an idea as villain uh, ones that use the unforgivable curse to make the game more challenging. Ooh, we got Hades. I like it. Uh, yo, happy Wednesday, Wednesday. Nick and AJ, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're about to uh, do, let's do the latest and greatest drop. And then we're going to get into some of the uh, news articles that I had found on the interwebs. Just talking about overall Wizarding World news. And we're gonna go from there. Hold on. I got an email. Hold on. Did they approve it? Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Always. Always. 
Okay, okay, okay. Bum, bum. All right, let's get into the latest <laughs> and greatest. Over. I didn't expect to go over you guys. The latest and greatest. The latest and greatest. The latest and greatest. The latest and greatest. Latest and greatest. Ryan Little. <laughs> It's over. I'd expect to go over you guys the latest and greatest. Latest and greatest. All right, all right, all right. So, um, first, if you guys were not aware, uh, it was April Fools' uh, this past Monday, Monday, two days ago. And um, for those of you guys unaware, April Fools' is also Fred and George Weasley's birthday. Uh, the twins, and there was a ton of April Fool's stuff. Um, one from the, a couple of from the listening world. So the first one being the announcement of a spinoff for a Hogwarts, not Hogwarts Legacy, uh, for a Harry Potter TV series spinoff. They, that was announced falsely, I might add, on Monday for April Fool's. Also, uh, I think it was MuggleNet? I want to say MuggleNet. They were the ones that actually also put out um, <laughs> that Taylor Swift requested to do a song for the upcoming Harry Potter TV series. And that one got me upset, which means it got me, it got me, <laughs> it got me. Cause I was like, what the heck? And it was like one of the first ones, like I'm going online and I always forget. I was just like, bro, like I always forget internet is a landmine there's a content creator who's looking for new news updates and stuff they got me so the taylor swift one got me not the tv show spinoff the taylor swift one got me and i was on instagram of all places so uh for april fools uh, my question to you guys did any of you guys get rick rolled did you guys get got and what were some of the best ones you guys saw uh on <laughs> on uh the interwebs monday and again it, uh, shout out to fred and george happy birthday to you guys uh weasley on april 1st which is again my birthday month and yeah smash the like button what's up larry uh the cabbage king will be next villain what there about another guy totally we got to post about it as long as uh cp oh my gosh Oh, uh, <laughs> it cracked. I forgot about that. Uh, very fitting date for the Weasley twins. Uh, Becky, I would agree. I think that was on purpose. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let me see. I thought uh, Power was free on Steam. No, they got you, Josh. Or April 1st, you can't trust the internet. Danielle, that goes into April 2nd, too. Because, like, on Twitter, if you didn't see a post and it's posted, like, 14, 18, 20 hours ago, it's still from April 1st. And so you might think, oh, it's the next day I'm in the clear. And you look at it, you're like, wait, this is actually happening. So you, you also have to pay attention, pay attention to the uh, post date as well. But they got me. They got your boy. Uh, what are the chances of something being announced on April Fool's Day? But is this fact reality? I say zero magic. Just because of the nature of April Fool's and the nature of the internet. I say zero. Uh, Ryan says, I'd love to see more Merlin Morgana references, but main baddie will be Sebastian Sallow if going off of Hogwarts Legacy. We're going to talk more about that, and I'd love to follow your thought process on that, Ryan. I purposely avoid all social media on April 1st. No. I may have been uh, born in the morning, but it wasn't this morning, <laughs> says Merlin. Uh, New York Times uh, Connections was the only thing that got me, but I still beat it, says Rita. Uh, love the April Fool's jokes all over Instagram. There were so many on Instagram. There were so many on Instagram. Uh, Adam Iski, what if we turn out to be the villain all along with uh, certain choices? Adam, I think... We will, I, I think, I don't think this is going to happen, but I think a good idea, and I had pitched this in my uh, Hogwarts Legacy 2 playlist video talking about villain. I think a good idea would be to pit us, the Ministry of Magic pits us as the villain. 
even though we're not obviously but pits us as the villain and we get the choice because everybody wants choices and we get the choice to um go with that um idea or that um that perspective if people are going to view us as a villain we're going to embrace it or we go the opposite way and try to clean up and try to prove why we're not the villain so i think if we have choices i think a cool yo! way yo a cool way to um play with the choice feature or consequence feature would be uh for us to embrace the villainy that the ministry of magic might pit on us or not and this is based off of, um, again, my, where I think the story would go with the ministry being so heavily involved with oh, us no, after no, everything, no. <laughs> which a lot of people will be using AK as you just heard. <laughs> hey, Danny Silver Queen. Maybe like an anti-hero story, not necessarily story-wise. I'm not saying the whole story is going to be like that. The story is going to be based off of the decision you make. With o with the overarching theme being re defeating the villain, defeating the actual villain. So let's say we went the villain path, for example, right? But we actually still defeat the villain at the end. And if we go down the good path, we still defeat the villain at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. So um, I think though I think that's a way to separate. And then still meet back at the same conclusion at the end of the story, which will lead us into the third game. Anti-heroes group become the uh, Potter version of undesirable number one. Exactly, Professor Spells. Exactly. I, I um, referenced in my video uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, where the ministry said we were liars when we said Voldemort is back, when Harry said Voldemort is back. And so everybody was like, you're lying, you're crazy, like nobody believes you. Even Dumbledore kept his distance from him, so Harry felt alone. And I think those, that path, that emotional um, journey Harry went through eventually, I think could mirror our journey in Hogwarts Legacy uh, with the sequel. Again, especially if we have the ministry more involved in the sequel than they were in the first one. Morality says, oh, yeah, yeah, Ethan, yeah, yeah. They have to. They have to. They have to. They have to. Yeah, morality system would be great for sure. Not me. I'm cooking. <laughs> I wonder who is it. Sounds like a Cindy thing. So, yeah, yeah. So, that's my thing. So, that was one of the first things. Uh, people getting rickrolled for sure was one of the first things. Okay, now this next thing in regards to the latest and greatest was something since we're talking about um since we're talking about villainy and possible villains um i forgot who posted this but i'm gonna post it up here wait i hit the wrong one and it's it's actually a ranking which i was like yo this would be cool i don't know if i agree but i'd love to hear you guys uh take so let me see. Oh, wrong one. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Oh, I used the wrong one. Hold on. This is it. I copied the wrong one. Because I don't know if I agree with this list. There it is. A few moments later. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So this is uh, top seven villains from the Harry Potter series. And this was posted two days ago from Digital Trends. I came across it. I was like, I always see a lot of top rankings or like ranking stuff. But I'm like, is it? So they go in the order of the Dursleys being the least villainy. Then you got Barty Cross Jr. Then you got uh, Grindelwald. This is all in Harry Potter. Uh, like, not just the books, even the Fantastic Beast. Um, then we got Peter Pettigrew. 
Uh, Dolores Umbridge at three, Bellatrix Lestrange at two, and Voldemort at one. Um, I'd have Dolores higher. Honestly, I think the top two is fine. I think the top two is fine. I think the top two is fine, maybe. Honestly, I put Dolores, Bellatrix, and Voldemort. Vol Voldemort to me is just scared of death. So he wasn't evil. He, I mean, yes, he was evil. He was the essence of evil. But Dolores and Bellatrix, bro. <laughs> Yo, they didn't play. Umbridge is too low. Yeah, exactly. So these are the th this is the seven they have on their list. And I was like, bro, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I uh, agree with that one. I think Umbridge is one. You can do you can do Umbridge one, Voldemort two, Bellatrix three. Bellatrix did not care though. Like she was down for the cause, and it felt like she didn't need to. <laughs> Like she went above and beyond for the cause. So I felt like Bellatrix was more evil per se. Cause I, I go to the root of it. At the root of it, Bellatrix felt more evil. <laughs> With Voldemort, it felt like he was just scared of dying. Granted, he also wanted to be the most powerful like wizard ever, but Everything he did felt like it was out of fear. I, I need to kill. Uh, I heard about the prophecy. So I need to take out uh, Harry just because the prophecy says the one who's going to defeat me, you know. And so he did. He did everything out of fear. So I feel like Voldemort shouldn't be that high, even though he did horrible things. And torture the long bottoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly, Josh. Exactly. Umbridge was played so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She killed it. She killed it. Uh, I forgot the name of the actress. I, but I think Bellatrix is just evil, bro. Bellatrix don't play. Uh, in addition, Umbridge makes drinking tea out of a floral cup look bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a great Clementia. Also, what's up, Clementia? Uh, Daniel says Bellatrix is mental and a killer. She is the perfect villain. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Bellatrix was more of a was a better villain than Voldy. He has so many horror crushes early on. Bella had nothing. Yeah, but I mean, again, he had those horror crushes out of fear. He was like, I might die. I need to have a because um, I feel like one of the better villains are smart. So him being smart is making the Horcrux. So if he does die, you know, he's good to go. But I feel like if you're also you're a villain, you got to have that dog. You got to have that like, bro, like ain't nothing stopping me. Everybody's scared of me. I can do whatever I want. So I feel like you got to have that in you. And I felt like Voldemort never had that. He never had that. Even when he was a kid and he was stealing stuff, he did stuff on the sneak. You know what I'm saying? Out of fear. So I don't know. Bellatrix is chaos and Dolores is, I don't say anymore. <laughs> uh, just because the motive was fear doesn't mean he wasn't evil. Even Bella feared him. Great point, Gabe. <clears throat> and again, I don't fault Voldemort being one because it's Voldemort. Like, enough said. He who must not be named. Like, you couldn't even say his name. Like, that's the type of fear he had built. And like, rightfully so. Like that first Wizarding World War, he was going to town. <laughs> and even before that, you know? And so, I mean, there's a reason he still have followers even after his death. And yeah, I get it. But Umbridge, man, she just, I just hate Umbridge. I just hate Umbridge. <clears throat> uh, Double Debbie said. <laughs> AJ. Grindelwald was up there with Voldy. He uh, irritated. Wait, he initiated what was basically a Wizarding World War. <sighs> but then again, it goes back to motive that I was pointing out, even though Gabe makes a great point about like, even though the motive was fear, he still was like evil. 
Was Grindelwald, was what Grindelwald was doing evil? Cause he was just protecting his kind? Was what he was doing evil? I mean, yes, yes. Killing, yeah, killing, bad. Killing any, any race who you think is like less and is inferior or whatever but they were the wizarding world was scared of the jokers like in the what's the name of the second one uh what's the name of the second one crimes of grindelwald um when johnny when grindelwald showed like the future for whatever reason uh showing that the actions of the mogul world is going to lead to a world war and so they're like bro we gotta stop this so like even that he was like doing what he did in self-preservation even though he was manipulating it uh Voldy was ego manag yeah <laughs> i hate umbridge more than any west is gay <laughs> grindelwald wanted to uh mass unalive wait wanted to mass unalive people oh 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 okay yeah 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 metatron yeah 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 well, he was only in the UK, but Grindelwald was international. That's a good point. That's a good point. So is Grindelwald too low? Do we think Grindelwald is too low? Umbridge was so hateable because we've all known that teacher and false politician who views their power and uh, persecuted the innocent. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's true, too. Umbridge was just too relatable. Uh, Umbridge is more evil than Voldemort says Pete. What's up, Pete? Uh, she did what she could do with in her power, with her position of power. Uh, give her the throne and she will have you in chains the next day. That is true. Umbridge Crucio. <laughs> I say, I'll say this. I wanted to fight Umbridge more than any other adversary was bro. Yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't care about falling Voldemort. I wanted to take out Umbridge. I agreed, Josh. Agreed. Umbridge is the, uh, yeah. So Trisha says Grindelwald is too low. So who's ahead? Yeah, yeah. Grindelwald is a hide in Peter Pettigrew. Pettigrew is also doing stuff out of fear. He just. Yeah, I put. So yeah, I put. I put uh, Grindelwald higher than Pettigrew. So a lot of us would put Umbridge at one. Let's say we do Voldemort at two, Belichick at three, Grindelwald at four, Pettigrew at five, and you can keep the last two. Barty Crouch at six, and Dursley is at seven. So we would we would change the top five. Is what I'm hearing from chat. Yeah, yeah, Pettigrew's way too high. I might put Barty Cross Jr. higher than Pettigrew. I think I might put Barty Cross Jr. higher than Pettigrew. Who made this list has probably only seen the movies. Great point, Debbie. That's a great point. Uh, Grindelwald has four. Pettigrew was just a follower, wanted to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, he, he didn't initiate anything. I want a game about that. Uh, Hillary, what is good? Peter was rat, literally and figuratively speaking. Yeah, yeah, that's all he did. He just, he just betrayed James and Lily. I mean, j just, but I'm saying like, he wasn't evil. I mean, he was evil, but I think Barty Crouch was like far more evil. Yeah, Barty Crouch Jr. should be higher. Yeah, that's what Gabe is saying. Books, movies. I mean, obviously, Josh. Yeah. Over movie. Pettigrew was not a villain. He was a coward. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well said, Hilary. Also, what's up? Uh, smash the like button. Yes. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Jasper. I need to give you a special badge, Jasper. The original, for those of you guys who did not know, she's the very first ever Patrona Squad member. Jasper Jack. Ever. <laughs> what's up, Jasper? It's good to see you. Uh, let me see. 
Hell, totally. Peter was just following orders. I would say he is evil, like they're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what's the, what is the name of this list? Seven best Harry Potter villains rank. He wasn't. He wasn't that good a villain. He just. And then he just hid. He just turned into a rat for ages. He. Yeah. He wasn't even that good of a villain. Yeah. Or the Dearsley's evil or just nasty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, <laughs> they, they weren't even... They weren't even... A, I mean, they were perceived as a villain. I, I, don't, I don't mind them being on this list. I don't... I feel like you can find three other villains, though. Like, how is Fenrir not up here? Like, anybody who was close to Voldemort. Like, all them cats. How does Lucius Malfoy not up here? How does Lucius not up here? I say Lucius is more, more a better villain than um, the Dursleys. Yeah, how do you not have Fenrir or Lucius up here? <laughs> Lockhart. <laughs> Lockhart. Yo. We could say, um, nah, he wasn't the villain. I was going to say the minister. <laughs> Lockhart, bro. This list is inaccurate. Yeah, this was posted like a day or two ago. So I was like, hmm, who's making this list like this late? So yeah, again, something I came across. I wanted to share with you guys and talk to you guys about uh, before we get into the nitty gritty. Uh, I feel like Lucius is another coward and follower. Yeah, but I think villain-wise was more of a villain than the Dursleys. Like, I don't mind the Dursleys being last. I Like, if it was out of 10, I, I can see the Dursleys being 10. Like, I, I don't mind people putting them up there. Like, I wouldn't be mad at that. Even though I don't see it. I wouldn't be uh, mad at that at all. So... Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, lying parasite. I totally agree about Lucius says uh, Jenny. Lying parasite says Double Deputy. Lestrange is yeah, yeah, yeah. Says Professor Spells. Uh, Lockhart was a serial predator. Yeah. Especially with his obliviating peeps. Yeah. But he wasn't like the main antagonist. I'd put the Basculus <laughs> higher than the Dursleys. I, 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 ah. Lucius is in a weird area. Because a lot of his... A lot of his stuff didn't really like affect the overall narrative as a villain per se or even wasn't directly at harry until like they found out he was a fraud and stuff he was like he was like a peter Pettigrew still like a coward i don't know lockhart is tough yeah he was just fake yeah 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 like i feel like most of the people like especially on this list had a hand at with something affecting the entire wizarding world uh i mean the dursley's treatment of harry you know if harry didn't get out of the head out of there you know what's to say voldemort you know wouldn't be i don't know he they wouldn't have protection i don't know voldemort obviously had uh influence same with bella same with umbridge Pettigrew, his actions affected Voldemort's actions, so he's still there. Grindelwald affected everything during this time. Body Crouch again, same as like everybody else with Voldemort and the Dursleys. Yeah, I feel like Lucius, Fenrir, even it should be up here. So I don't know. This list is incomplete. And digital trends, you need to holler at your boy if you need to make an accurate ranking system. Like I was a villain in his own right. Seeing like only other people's achievements, but also stealing. He was a he was a bad guy, yeah. Yeah, he was a bad guy for sure. 
and their memories. Yep, 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 yep. Why has everyone forgot about Constance Picker? Oh my gosh, speaking of, what time is it? Let me get a time check. 457, oh, that's perfect timing. All right, let's get into this screen right here. And uh, we're gonna be calling in, speaking of Constance Picker, we're gonna be calling in Wizard PhD, and we're gonna be talking about um, some of my theories before we start writing in regards to the villains for Hogwarts Legacy 2 and specifically how the Unforgivable from Wizards Unite can play a role in the sequel. At least as an Easter egg, the most as a possible uh, cult or cabal that going, is going to have some influence on the wizarding world moving forward in back then and uh we're going to go over all the receipts i kept all the receipts i have in regards to where my notes were and overall why i think uh they could play a role moving forward so we're going to talk more about that i'm going to make sure to get uh let me see if i can get wizard phd in here right quick Da, 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 da. So yeah, get your thinking caps going. Get ready. We're about to we're about to talk some deets, which I'm excited about. I'm very excited about it. All right, let me blow this up. Let me blow this up. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going in the Discord. Let me turn the music down. All right, let me see if I can find her. Yo! Is it PhD? All right, I'm gonna call. Let's see if it comes through. Expecto <laughs> <laughs> I'm like listening to the stream. <laughs> oh, so you get all the settlers. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see. Make sure. All right. Say a uh, mic check for me. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Uh, chat, let me know if she's too low or too high. We did this last time with uh, Retro and we made some adjustments. So. <laughs> Everybody say, hi, Wizard PhD. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Uh, first, uh, Lynette, just do a small intro. Let everybody know who you are. If you guys oh. aren't already following her, make sure you do so. Uh, Mods, can, you, can we get a link for Lynette's channel in the chat as well? So just a quick introduction for those who might not know who you are, Lynette. Hello, I'm Prof Lynette, and uh, my channel is Wizard PhD. Uh, I also do things for IGN part time. Hey, short and sweet. Hey, <laughs> you got a uh, uh, um, um, new title? I think I saw yep. that on Patreon or something. New title? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay, okay. So I am a video guides production assistant. So all the publishing, <laughs> scheduling, coordinating. All of that. Still some editing. But I'm about to say, do you still get to edit still, even though you're more of the management type, do you still get to edit? Yeah. Um, what's fun about this role is that I've, I'm talking to even more people and <laughs> other freelancers, and I get to see a variety of games and not just focus on one, which is super fun. Okay, okay, um, okay. Lately, I have been playing Content Warning with some other people. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, it just came out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, and it's super fun. I am not someone who likes horror or scary things. Like I don't play Phasmophobia, even though I know Shanna and Cooper have been like, play right. with us. <laughs> I'm like, no, nope, can't do it. Don't but have the heart. Yeah. So chaotic and funny. And that's exactly what I want in a game. <laughs> awesome. Let's go. Yeah. Go. Um, if you guys need any uh, guides for uh, games and stuff, you'll probably come across IGN and even some of Lynette's videos specifically for Final Fantasy seven which is you're currently playing through it correctly right or posting it 
about it? Uh, yeah. So I, I have been paused at chapter 12 for, for a while, so I'm not done with it. I don't know how it ends. Don't okay. Tell me I, it I'm ends. not going to say it. Well, I know but... you're playing it. But... Yeah, I'm playing um, it too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I am now like a new Final Fantasy VII super fan. Yes. Uh, there yeah. was like a gaming convention here a couple of weekends ago in Phoenix. And uh, I met the voices of Tifa Lockhart and oh. Yuki. Oh. And uh, they were super nice. And I geeked out and I was like, I don't know. I haven't, because oh, the Yuffie voice actress, Susie, she was like, have you finished the game yet? And I was like, no. But oh. there's a reason I've been I've been covering it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Britt Barron, I keep when I ran into her again. I was just like, I'm the IGN guides girl. So I hope that she, mm -hmm, if she mm -hmm. ever watches this stream, she's like, oh yeah, that's that girl. That's that, that girl. Yeah, yeah. It, it connects. You it know, connects. Tifa's watching your stream. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tifa. <laughs> Big been a fan since 1997. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, yeah. So go show some love. To let, but the reason I have her here to uh, this afternoon or tonight or in the morning, wherever you are in the world, is because both of us covered uh, Harry Potter Wizards Tonight extensively. Uh, we were, we're the OGs. Like we could, we could say we were on the bandwagon first. We were one of those people, uh, uh, ex WooTubers. Uh, uh, shout out. And um, with my premise when it comes to the Hogwarts Legacy 2 storyline, uh, before we even get into writing, I want to set up who I think the overarching villain uh, could be and why. And I pitched a while ago The Unforgivable, which is a dark group of dark wizards from Harry Potter Wizards Unite that could fit into um, Hogwarts Legacy very easily uh, if done right. And we have examples of uh, port key games borrowing material names, uh, even likenesses from past games and carrying them over into other titles under the port key games banner. And I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that here with Hogwarts Legacy 2 sequel. So that being said, uh, I'm going to display the premise that I sent Lynette on screen right now for you guys. And it's a lot of words, uh, a lot of stuff not highlighted, but Lynette, you read, the, I'm gonna read through the premise and I just wanna hear your thoughts on it and the, just overall, I your initial- I swear that I'm up to no good. <laughs> your initial reaction with it after I read it. So um, I have the Unforgivable uh, from Harry Potter Wizards Unite uh, having some influence on, uh, or role in Hogwarts Legacy 2 is based on an assumption. Uh, the assumption being that Hogwarts Legacy 2 story and or villain uh, will be connected to the Ministry of Magic. Uh, we know the Ministry of Magic has had a hand in uh, the MC, the main character, or our character in Hogwarts Legacy um, development. The field guide is from the Ministry of Magic. Fig, our mentor, um, is also uh, reporting all the events that happen within Hogwarts Legacy to the Ministry of Magic as well. And uh, I think plus Ancient Magic, the magic we control is studied at the Ministry of Magic. And I think the Ministry of Magic would, uh, wouldn't like a 15 or 60 year old uh, making decisions to reveal or hide uh, ancient uh, magic as uh, we did at the end of Hogwarts Legacy. So the initial premise I've thrown out there, Lynette, thoughts? Uh, okay, I don't know if Chandler or any other lurker avalanche <laughs> people are here, but absolutely the Ministry of Magic. Like, I love the assumption. Like, I'm not going to even question it or be like, oh, why would it? No, yeah. this is a perfect uh, assumption to kind of branch off of yes. because there's so much richness of, like, the history of the Ministry of Magic and how it interacts with Hogwarts. Yeah, well, you know, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So I I don't have any you know questions there, and obviously as you mentioned, like with Fig, uh, I mean Fig had connections. Well, okay, not just Fig, like George. our other professors. Uh, well, I mean, that, yeah, Sharp, Peckett, you know, like all of them. Yeah, all these people. Yeah. So I definitely think that uh, it that setup in the first game lends itself to like 
rich uh, uh, or deepening those backstories mm-hmm. and also like tapping let's into fly. connections let's and like let's flesh out like flow. in a character mm-hmm. uh, so any one of the professor like I personally obviously want <laughs> Hecate all of Hecate like I'm sorry <laughs> Department of Mysteries yes please um, so it gives you opportunities to kind of like as, or I'm thinking from the perspective of like creating or fleshing out the world and Mm -hmm, using mm -hmm. characters to kind of springboard. Yep. I think, yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. So we're on the same page. And again, I didn't get Lynette here just to co-sign. I I trust her knowledge of the wizarding world. Her, shout out to um, (laughs) Brita as well. One of the four knowledgeable friends I have in the, in this content creator space that I know knows uh, the Harry Potter franchise in and out and also played Hogwarts um, Wizards Unite and Hogwarts Legacy so um, I just wanted to make sure we were I was aligned when I came up with this premise before we even like did any jumping off points when we start writing this okay cool 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 now there was some I had some connections uh, that I threw out there when it came to um, how it could fit in regards to the connections between the unforgivable and uh, the Ministry of Magic, at least as a villain or at least playing some role within um, Hogwarts Legacy 2. And it's based off of just who they are as a group. Um, Let me see. I talk about it here. There's a quote I pulled up off of the um, Harry Potter wiki. It said, um, the the Unforgivable Wolves is made up of some of the Wizarding World's uh, most rich and powerful, um, including members of the Sacred 28. Those are your pure blood families that have been gone, that have been just constant throughout the generations of the Wizarding World. And uh, their goal uh, was to maintain and increase their wealth and status. The organization began as a ancient cult of dark wizards and witches that, according to legend, could transfer knowledge and power from generation to generation through ominous-looking masks. Now, this is where I need you to like dig into your memory brink when it comes to Wizards Unite, uh, Lynette. And even with Hogwarts Legacy. Do we have examples, specifically in Hogwarts Legacy, of mask being a big deal within the game? And my my thing, my guess is the gear. We have a ton of masks with the mm-hmm. gear. So what are your thoughts in regards to just this group being an ancient cult, first and foremost, how that might connect to Hogwarts Legacy, but also chasing power and passing power through generation to generation through mask. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I don't remember, maybe it was Dumble Debbie. Somebody mentioned it earlier in the chat about in that very first trailer, the announcement trailer, there was that yes. scene and it had the mask. And so yes. I know many of us oh my former Wizards Unite players were like, this is it. Oh this is our moment to gosh. kind of bring it back, you know? That's right. Um, it didn't play out that way, but no. masks are obviously something that baddies use because they are cowardly. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to hide their identities. <laughs> and I think the most fascinating part about this uh, is that so the Unforgivable were a group that were present day. Wizarding World. Right, so correct, like Wizards correct. Night was present day, correct. called themselves the Unforgivable. Um, there was also like, we also had these memories. So we had, we got to see masks of Death Eaters. So mm. it's already establishing. And with the the mention, it's Gareth Greengrass, who apparently <laughs> found this information about an ancient cult. And we right. find out later, spoilers, uh, Gareth is not great. Um, but the idea that you're having these like legacies passed down where even before the Death Eaters, there was an ancient cult. There was mm-hmm. like, even before this. And yeah, so you yep. always have these groups of dark witches and wizards. And we even see people that are aligning, witches and wizards aligning with Ranrock and yep, yep. we're trying to fight them. So it's a nice thread to tap into. And especially since this is already, I, I personally count Wizards Unite as canon. It's so facts. this is already yeah. like something that's established as kind of a, a little crumb, a little thread to pull on to be like, well, if we are going back in the late 1800s, this is a perfect sort of another um, thing to build out. Yep. And you already have legacies 
you already have the familiarity of wh whether it is that you have played Wizards Unite or you're only familiar with the Harry Potter wizarding world or you're new to the wizarding world and mm -hmm. are just familiar with Hogwarts Legacy, everyone has an entry point to connect with that history that mm. is pretty long. Well long said. Standing. Yep, yes, yep. this guy. Yep, yep, yep. Agreed. And um, that connection, that thread that we could be pulling on, I pointed out, again, a, a week or two ago, um, Sallow. Sallow. Um, that is not a sacred 28 name. That last name is not a sacred 28 name. It's a made up name. It, unless we've heard it um, in past movies in passing, might be the name of a person, last name of a person and the NPC in the movies or something. But I haven't come across that name outside of Wizards Unite and Hogwarts Legacy. And Wizards Unite was first, by the way. And this mm -hmm. was a character within uh, the Ministry of Magic in the 2000s, again, during current time frame, that had a role, um, at least with the events leading up to what happened overall with the calamity and stuff and his involvement with Gareth, Green Gareth Greengrass, who was the eventual uh, villain, but not so much once you get into uh, your girl and stuff. So let me bring up, uh, the con let me get up the Sallows right quick. Let me get that link. So there is already connections between the games already established already that whether it's through um, Easter eggs or not, those threads are there. And so I love to imagine that like someone somewhere has this like digital copy of like Wizarding World family trees, yes. and then you just have yes. Albert Sallow, and you have Sebastian Sallow, Solomon Sallow. You just yep. have like, oh, let's just build. This is this family. Yep. Right here. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> and like you, it, you, I, you have to have somebody like that because even with yeah. Wizards Unite, they pulled. Uh, I forgot the name of. I think they pulled like two or three characters from that Fantastic Beast game that I yeah. think you tried. Matilda Grimblehawk. Yes. 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 I thought she was sus. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. She was I the main character. <laughs> yeah, she was the main character in that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And we found out she was transferred over to Wizards Unite as a main character, yeah. as part of the ministry, our ta SOS task force. I couldn't remember her role, but she basically had the same uh, title as she did within that yeah. Fantastic Beast game. So there's yeah, already she was, like, precedent. like the creature person, and then there was like uh, Myra or whoever. And there, mm -hmm. Yeah, there were multiple characters. Because that, that game also got shut down. So this is, <laughs> for that last live stream, the group stream, that's why I was like, Oh, so you want to do mobile, huh? Yeah. <laughs> keep like, it don't. open. Yes, please. Just keep it open. Support it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Support it. Oh, my gosh. So, um, yeah. So, going back to connections again. Uh, so, us throwing out the Unforgivable isn't just, like, us being fans of Wizards Unite and wanting to see Wizards Unite live through Hogwarts Legacy. No. There's a precedence that has already been set by WB Games within their IP amongst maybe even port key games because even though it's not really, really canon, they can all have their own canon within it, which is why port key games was established in the first place. So they can tell their own stories without interfering with what is already established through the Harry Potter series, Fantastic Beast stuff, so forth and so on. So um, they can tell their own stories and have it all connect in a way. Um, so we got the Sallows and it shows right here family members uh solomon salo who's the uncle of sebastian and Anne, and then we got uh seb and Anne right down here and so those are the only ones that has been mentioned with that last name and both come from video games which is under the port key games banner another one is sweeting poppy sweeting which was pulled from the og harry potter games which i forgot the first name of the guy who took care of unicorns who was a person who uh was a magic zoo like who took her unicorn so there's precedence for it there's precedence for it so Here's where it gets crazy, Lynette. And again, I want to hear your thoughts. Here's where it gets, here's where I start getting like my theory hat. Um, Grim. 
<laughs> and Grim's my boy. Grim is my boy. Shot, let me get that hearts in the chat for Grim. Huff, give hearts off. to Grim. Give hearts to Constance. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Grim. Was the foundable spot ancient magic? Yes or no? Uh, I, I think... So the deal with, like, the foundable spell is that I imagine that any sort of magic that gets pushed to its limit or, like, tampered with or, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's... it's uh, there were multiple things going on with the foundable spell that I... Part of me feels like it's it was kind of like a synthetic is not the right word, but mm -hmm. kind of like a like you're trying to you know how in the love room they're trying to like recreate love and it's like not working like yeah. that's what I imagine it uh, of or is is like not like the pure essence of ancient magic, but something that is morphed somehow. That's how oh, I envision. Okay, it. okay, I'm glad. Oh, that's a perfect word, Lynette. That's a perfect word because. I think emotion plays a role into it mm. with the mm -hmm. spell. And as we saw in Hogwarts Legacy with ancient magic, if you're pulling emotions and pulling bad emotions, negative emotions, it could turn or morph, as you so eloquently said, mm -hmm. into something else. And mm -hmm. you threw out the love room, which is a, a place uh, Grimm spent a lot uh, of time in. And uh, there's, a, there's a line where, and I got to bring it up, where Gareth even talks about Grimm being um, very capable and why they took uh, Penelope, his wife, in the first place to kind of force or move Grimm towards this position where he would look for a way to save her and kind of the unforgivable kind of guiding him into eventually casting the foundable spell. And I don't know if this version of that spell was what they were hoping for, but I know the unforgivable kind of moved it there along the lines, but they utilized emotion as a manipulation when mm -hmm. getting him to do it. How do you fall when it comes to the foundable spell overall? And if this was what they were looking for, the unforgivable spell, the unforgivables uh, as the group, is this what they were looking for, this version where it shows people from different times? Or is this a little bit of grim coming in? Um, I mean, I feel like they're... <sighs> There may have been a little bit of grim coming in because of like the constant searching, because that's why it mm, felt like there mm. was no end, right? Yeah, it was yeah. just like can't Good find point. it, can't find it, can't find it. Good point. Um, but yeah, what was super interesting about the calamity is is you know it, manipulative is is the key here. Is like mm -hmm. they're you know the end goal of like being able to. I mean, think about these unforgivable curses. Uh, that we have, where mm -hmm. we have things that are about control, they're about manipulation, they're about all these things, about getting things, getting people to do things that maybe uh, they wouldn't normally do. Right. And one way to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do is to put them in a position emotionally where they feel desperate or they, you know, there's no other option. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there, there may have been some sort of... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Like, I, I feel like that the sort of emotional, um, uh, what's the word? Amplification of what Ooh, was happening. Okay, okay, okay. Might have, might have also worked it. Played a, a role into like how it turned out as a spell. Yeah. yeah. I no, I, I agree. Now, I'm sticking with this spell because it's ancient. I, I think it's ancient magic. Uh, Wait, did we know his middle name was Marshall? I did I not know did. that. <laughs> Where or, did that come from? I know. I was like, are they making this up? This is Harry Potter Wiki. <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah, yeah. They, they're usually reliable. Uh, so this is Grim Folly right here. Um, for those of you guys unaware, Folly, as a last name, is part of the uh, Sacred 28 Wizarding Families. And we do see a Folly in Hogwarts Legacy, I think around the Quidditch pitch. Um, and I think Hector Folly is his name, who eventually becomes the Minister, minister of Magic at some point uh, during his uh, lifespan. So, again, connections between the two games already there and already established. Uh, so, my, so, sticking with uh, Grimm in the spell. And this is where my theory comes in. I think the Unforgivable had a hand obviously in um abducting penelope kidna kidnapping penelope grim's wife to force him to do something for them i think they were trying to get a hold of some power which is the calamity eventually being that whether it's ancient magic or not i think a power like this is something the unforgivable would want mm -hmm. move moving back to where we're at now in hogwarts legacy 2 Word is getting around of the savior of Hogwarts going into the sequel. The ministry is like, all right, we got to control this cat. We can't let somebody with this ancient magic just be running around. Let's put our hands into them and like, you know, kind of guide them in a way. And along comes somebody possibly from the Unforgivables who wants to manipulate and control our character in Hogwarts Legacy 2, since we both think the Ministry will have some involvement, boom, we're off to the races in regards to what possibly this villain is trying to do or manipulate us to do as a teen who is very emotional, like a Grimm was, to doing something with the power that we're able to uh, manifest control and use. What mm -hmm. say you there, Lynette? Yeah, I mean, so one line that I picked out um, from Wizards Unite, I know I'm going back to Wizards no, Unite, but no, like, please, just to so. kind of reinforce that sort of ministry cabal mm -hmm. uh, tension. Uh, from a Weasley predicament part one, I don't know when this happened in, <laughs> in time, but um, Harry is talking to us, and this is, at this point, a bunch of our friends uh like luna and i don't know who else but the, at this point it's george weasley okay um are having these false not false but they're they they think that they're yes. false memories yes they're yes having I these remember. memories and uh in this memory a wizard in a robe indicates that the ministry and the unforgivable both have something the other wants and so like part of this was kind of like we're we're willing to negotiate because we have this hostage and you have this thing that we want like trade right, sort of thing. Right, right. So having like an aware. Okay, so after we did Hogwarts Legacy, stuff happened. Um, <laughs> I I know that many of us might have done evil playthroughs, but we didn't kill every single dark witch and wizard out correct, there. Correct. Correct. So like having them regroup, knowing like what they were trying, what they were seeking out. Um, and then us protecting what they were seeking out. Mm -hmm. and, and like that sort of sets up this sort of like, oh, this is not done yet. Like maybe, may, maybe it'll be sixth year. Maybe they'll jump ahead a few years. I don't know. But like right. the reality is, is that all these people, there are people that know things that happen, like what really happened and what's at stake. The ministry is, has the most, um, sort of incentive to be like, we need to put like, we need to have a special task force on this or something <laughs> right, where right, it's like, we, right. uh, we need to make sure that this sort of thing is protected. So I think that having that sort of like, uh, okay, we're beyond Hogwarts at this point because mm -hmm. this, I mean, yes, we got through it, but there's, there's, a lot there's more. more like murmurings mm -hmm. potentially coming out uh, from the consequences of what happened. Uh, I think that definitely sets it up for having that kind of we're we're trying to protect something. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking of as you were talking this, though, this is going way back to the masks. Mm -hmm. So if we have this like group, regardless of whether they call themselves like, I don't know, Ran Rocks something or whatever. Yeah, like they, yeah, yeah. They're like continuing on with the name. <laughs> so like if any of them are part of like 
are part of the lineage of these ancient cults that have long existed with these masks. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was thinking is like, wouldn't it be wild if if you had an ancient mask that's, that was full of secrets and knowledge, Yo. wouldn't you want to lock it away? Yo, yeah. Wouldn't you want to like have a whole set of trials that protects oh a bunch of ancient gosh, knowledge? Oh my gosh, Instead though, it's like underground and we are, we can choose to be the anti-hero. I don't know. Lynette. Wouldn't that be wild? Lynette. Oh my gosh, you just broke the internet. So instead, if we do consequences in Hogwarts Legacy 2 and say we want that knowledge and power from that mask, instead of the pensive trial that we might go do a good playthrough, we get the mask trials. Oh my gosh, on the other side. I mean, the dark ancient magic. Yes. The ancient magic. Yes. The secrets to that. Yes. And it's all still studying and understanding ancient knowledge, ancient magic, ancient everything when it comes, when it boils down to it. Oh my God. Gosh. Okay, go back to this this screenshot on your or this shot on your screen. Like when I saw this for the first time, that's what I thought. I was like, this is a thing full of ancient secrets that yeah. I need mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. how to learn all the dark spells and everything. Instead, we got Sebastian Zala <laughs> teaching us all three unforgivable curses, all which was fine. All but, of them. <laughs> <laughs> like some other kid is teaching us this. Okay. <laughs> I remember when this, like, when this trailer came out, this was, there was a room, I forgot what they were called, but there was, like, uh, a thing out there that said the precursors to the Death Eaters before, <laughs> um, you know, obviously Tom Riddle got his group and everything. Yeah. And I thought the, this guy might have been the precursor to the Death Eaters, something along the lines of, like, uh, Salazar's own style of Death Eaters back in the day that still continues his thing that eventually morphed into what Tom Riddle uh, turned into, which was his group called the Death Eaters. Because, I mean, Tom did everything Salazar did. Like, he was not an yeah. original cat at all. Like, none of this stuff <laughs> was original. <laughs> He just so, pretended, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm so cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're, you're, like, stealing your ideas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, he did that? Okay, I'm going to do that, too. So, like, I thought this was a precursor. But, bro, if we get consequences and we have a way to do a set of, oh, my gosh, trials And imagine, entirely? like, just mechanically, like, yeah. let's say you're going through and your reward is the mask. And, like, the mask itself has specific skills or stats or like mm, something its own that, skill tree like with that the would be magic. cool if it's like i got this mask and it has it does all this stuff and then this and, and i don't know and maybe you could because what i really would love is like if you could like fuse things together or mm -hmm. like i don't know experiment, like you're doing but... like you're doing final fantasy a little bit with the exactly, thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be material. yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll just like chip off a piece of this mask and put it like in, bro, in my wand. I don't know. Bro, that yo, replay you wouldn't have to worry about replayability. Cause my no. gosh, you yeah. have an entirely different task of trials and stuff that you have to go through and new skill tree, everything. Bro, yeah. I Man, see, this is I mean, why. This is why. This is why you need Wizards United. This is why. Connection. <laughs> That's exactly what I was trying to say. I was like, yeah. this is why Wizards United was so clutch, bro. The writing was so good, man. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, I so I love good. that thought. Um, there, now we had some questions in chat about the foundable spell, and um, do you remember? Grim having to go to Prague uh, library yeah. or something. Yeah, he checked out some like very ancient tome because yes. like that had information about yes. the, the whatever spell. spells. And I'm just like, oh, okay. It's... And there was like all these hoops of like, because so this is the other thing, like your point about having the ministry 
the ministry being involved is not like a simple sort of like the mm -mm. ministry good, the cabal bad. Mm -mm, like you mm -mm. can have the complexity of like mm -mm. Uh, in Wizards Unite, there's a mole in the ministry. Like that is perfect. <laughs> right, like, right, exactly. Why do our plans keep getting thwarted? Oh, it's because this girl with glasses who showed up one day is sabotaging everyone. <laughs> exactly, man. It's, it's not that. And that's what's the best part about it because it was so intricate when it came yeah. to not only the story but uh just that overall journey bro so um again we're making our case for the unforgivable um i'm i'm bringing up this video because it touches on i'm going to bring up something that our group did i remember this to this day so lynette while i look for the video do you remember when zoe uh fodder um all those cats. I think even Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. Broke down the notes. This, like at night, I was already in bed. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all worked through the night. I was like, oh okay, you go for it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to show you guys a screen from a um, from a Wizards Unite trailer. And again, um, um, this is me responding to what the Foundable spell is or was, and it doesn't really explain it in a way but it kind of sets up the events here it is right here of what happened i gotta love this trailer okay these notes right here okay this guy i remember staring at this thing for hours okay uh mm -hmm. so there's time there's uh love room entrance logs right here love room let's just get this out of the way we all know love is the most powerful magic in existence like it's the most powerful. We've heard it so many times in the Harry Potter books, according to Wizarding World lore. And so it seems emotion has always has something to do with how you're utilizing magic or whatever. So we talked earlier, Lynette and I mentioning the love room and Grimm, who was the one who eventually cast the foundable spell, being the one who spent a lot of time in here. And you see the logs in with Grim Folly a lot. And this was because he was missing his wife. His wife was abducted. We thought, he thought maybe even dead, but he thought eventually she was still alive. So anyway, <clears throat> but there's also a bunch of transcripts in different languages around here. From the ministry, we got different ministries of magic from different governments and stuff. And again, it's in different languages. So fast forward to our shout out to the WooTubers. They actually uh, translated it. And uh, this is how it reads. I might have to blow this up because I'm always blind. Um, OK, so uh, talking about the calamity and Grimm and what happened, they said since the incident last night, we've been. Um, what is that word? Inundated with owls from ministries across the globe asking what on earth has happened and who is responsible for this calamity. We now find ourselves in, we must prepare um, our official response as soon as possible. So we get the first one from the French Ministry of Magic without wanting uh, to propagate uh, baseless conspiracy theories. We wonder if there's a link with the London Five who were five, I think all of them were ministry officials with one being a daily Daily profit, Planet, yeah. yeah, Daily Profit reported, <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, have there been any recent developments? So all of this is just in a trailer. Are there rumors that the uh, man responsible is married to one of the London Five? He is. It was Grim Folly, and one of the London Five was his wife, uh, Penelope Folly. Uh, unless you have, okay, unless you used ancient magic or you're a wind or spirit of some kind, there's no way you can view our prohibitions. This isn't our fault. So somebody's throwing out ancient magic already in the Japanese mm -hmm. ministry of magic. Already, mm -hmm. already. They're like, yo, there's no way. Like, we didn't do anything. So I'm just again, like- this is present day, so. Yes, exactly. This is like our timeline, like four years ago, yeah. 2019, whatever yeah, you want to call yeah, yeah. it. Um, and then we got from the Chinese ministry of magic, uh, we congratulate the unspeakable person for their uh, quick mind that also performed a counter curse. Who did that? Who did the counter curse? Was it Grim also? Uh, I can't remember now. I have not looked back at this <laughs> to remember <laughs> that at all, though. No. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot that was a thing. Okay, but anyway, may we bring up 
uh, to you guys the detailed information we provided him so we can send an owl. Who did the counter curse? Was it Garrett? Was it that Grim? Did Grim realize that like what was happening right as he was casting it? Is that why? Like, yeah, it got weird? yeah, he fixed it. He might have fixed yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what happened. Bro. Okay. Um, and then we got the Italian Ministry of Magic. They are mm -hmm. um, already reporting that the counter spell is very unstable. It seems that the things implemented uh, to control the incident are not sufficient in the long term. So that's why it was popping up everywhere. And that was our job mm -hmm. as the uh, SOS task force. Uh, let me see. So then it quote at the end. So you see the extent of concern. Please see the following out immediately. Blah, blah, blah. And then Matilda Grimblehawk, your girl. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. So this was, and this was all, this was all translated. When this trailer dropped, yeah. this was all translated the same day and shared the next day uh, so by good. Poke Fodder, Wizard Ray Chris, Zoe Stitches and Witches, Posey, Posey Oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, and everybody involved in that. This was in Discord. Oh that my, was oh my gosh. That five years ago. Yeah, oh, that was five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're old. Okay. We're yeah. old. Oh my gosh. So anyway, the foundable spell, we I think, because Grimm went to uh Prague, got an ancient, quote unquote, ancient tome, as Lynette pointed out, and cast a powerful spell that not only uh affected him, but everybody, like all the ministries across the globe, was affected by this spell. And eventually Grimm was like, yo, I messed up. Let me do this counter spell. I think it, it has to be ancient magic. I think it has to be ancient mm -hmm. magic. And for the fact that um, Gareth Greengrass was the one who pushed Grimm to do this, the leader of the forgive, Unforgivable during this time period, mind you, I think it makes sense to have somebody, whether it's an Easter egg, whether it's, whether it's a mention or not, somebody like a Gareth Greengrass, maybe not the leader of the Unforgivable, but work for the Unforgivable, come along with us in Hogwarts Legacy 2 mm -hmm. and try to do the same thing. That's what I think. How so you I'm rereading this, like, uh, there's this, so I'm rereading the entry for the transcribed tome, mm -hmm. or it says transcribed tome, it says an ancient tome, uh, scribed in, oh wait, there are several loose sheets of paper tucked into the book with Grimm's handwriting. Uh, I forgot this guy's name, the guy with the scarf, but he was in the other game too. <gasps> Folly yes. was incredibly skilled in rune translation and ancient languages. Yes. This yes. particular tome had never been translated. So that right what? there makes me be like, wait a second. What? So we have ancient masks and we also have maybe some books that exist that have never been translated. Like, where did that come from? Where was it? How did he, oh why is it in this library? Gosh. Oh my gosh. That would be gosh. cool. Gosh. Wait, what link is that? Let me um, see. Here, let me just. Yeah, send it to me on Discord if you have I'll it. Um, here, I'll just uh, share. I have it on my Google Drive. Okay. Oh my gosh. That was one. I forgot who said that, but I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. 